we delight in that. And I think that is where you have people who will attack the people who stand in line for Jordans. You have people who will attack the people who won't go to an HBCU. You have people that will attack the people that may necessarily, that may feel like they're pro-black or they're pro-white or they're pro-brown or pro-yellow. You know, there's a need for us. I call it the contrarian syndrome. It just, there are some people that must be contrary to whatever is going on. There are people that must be contrary to whatever the point is. They must be contrary. And we have those individuals. So regardless of what it is or what may happen, it's their duty, it's their prerogative to approach someone that is contrary to their belief or whatever, whatever they're saying, and just annihilate them or point out their ignorance or what they necessarily may not know. And then there's a burden of proof that lies on everybody. You know, I had experienced that this morning. I had a spirited discussion with someone on Facebook. And again, I entered the discussion. And that's something that we must practice, restraint. We see things, we see posts, comments, tweets. We acknowledge them, but it's not necessarily our place to respond and speak on everything we see. Especially if we are not educated in that topic, if we don't have a context to draw from, or if we weren't invited. We have, we speak about freedom of speech, we speak about our right to express ourselves, you know, people say, well, I have the ACLU, and they're going to protect my civil liberties, I can say whatever I want, and you are correct. But there is a burden of proof on people when you enter a discussion or when you enter something that you didn't create. And you either need to have the burden of understanding, the burden of fact, or the burden of context. Carry those with you. And it prevents defense mechanisms of sarcasm. And it def- it prevents the defense mechanism of if you are not correct. And if you face an opposition or if you face a follow-up question to your point and you may not be prepared you don't have to take a petty avenue and I did take a petty avenue on some of the responses and some of the remarks and again it was because I entered a comment, I entered a post I entered into a situation where I was not prepared Um, and instead of adding to the discussion or presenting and adding something to the topic the topic was not necessarily discussed and there was a loss there, at least on my part, just because I could have learned and contributed and I didn't because I didn't walk in prepared. So I think with a lot of the people that clap back, I think that with a lot of folks who are attacking people or dragging people or getting people together, shading people, reading people, um, I think that, I won't say I think, I'm positive that in most of these cases, the burden of context, fact, and relevance may not have been applied and they did not walk in with that burden. Yes, people have a burden to speak, you know, with respect and to speak, you know, factually, you know, without error, but the audience or the potential audience also have, they have a burden. They have a responsibility to walk into the situation, either prepared to learn, aware of the situation, with context, with knowledge, with fact. And if we begin to have that burden and place it within ourselves, it doesn't matter what is posted. It doesn't matter what comes up. Because instead of dealing with the human manifestation of pride and feelings and all of that the issue can be discussed and 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 you may not necessarily have the right approach but you can learn and instead of a back and forth and a a sarcasm condescending tug of war there can be an exchange of ideas there could be the dialogue and Either you will come away learning something you didn't know 
or sharing something that you may have already known and then someone else didn't, you walk away with something different. Perhaps your opinion doesn't change, but you had a healthy discussion and a healthy exchange of opposing views because I think that the point of a dialogue or the point of a discussion, and again, I entered the post, so this wasn't an initial dialogue. <clears throat> but when it becomes a dialogue, the goal should be that both or all participating parties should walk away with something that they didn't enter the dialogue with. Whether there is a right or wrong, it's not a right or wrong aspect, but there should be some aspect that, or perspective that you didn't necessarily have or you weren't thinking about but after the dialogue you walk away and you're thinking this in addition to how you originally felt so i'm going to call myself out put myself out there and say hey the next time you know we're we're in a situation you see a post you see a quote a tweet you're observing something in the national media or just what's happening have the burden or remember that the burden of context fact knowledge and relevancy applies to you before you feel the need to drag somebody clap back get sarcastic you know perform in the coliseum to the delight of the crowd because then after that after the people were bloodied and the one person potentially was liberated you know the coliseum left and then there were it was empty until the next time you know so you may be the gladiator for this particular event, but there are many gladiators, so the crowd would delight in somebody else's bloody carnage. You know, we're not special in that regard. We are all individually unique, but this practice does not, you know, it's not exclusive. So I just wanted to present that, talk about that. You know, <clears throat> I will further elaborate on some of the other issues in another video, but thinking about you know the need for or why did you know Tyrese have to have a negative you know call out of Chris Rock and then why did Chris Rock have to call out the Smiths who even though they acknowledged they weren't going to come you know said we know that he'll do a great job and there was a sense of solidarity and then would it be solidarity if he went out there and did his job as a comedian because comedians make fun of people they make fun of situations. They found the humor, the irony. So I'm not necessarily certain that Jada is upset or offended. And I don't think that Cat Williams, speaking on the success of Kevin Hart, is the best use of this arena that we've been placed in. If you have a different opinion, you know, I'd love to hear it. If you have another question or a reply video or response, I would love to hear it. We can keep the conversation going. Um, and until next time, I will talk to you guys next time.